The relief valve was dripping water. The compression tank was flooded again. In the fall, just a few months ago, we found it in the same condition and drained the tank. Why is a compression tank flooding? Welcome, friends, to the Boiler Room Detective Channel. I'm your host, Ray Wolfarth. Today, we're discussing why the steel compression tank is flooding. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a newbie, I hope you learned something new from the video. Finding the cause of a flooded compression tank requires patience. There's no immediate feedback as it could take several days before you know if what you did will work. The flooding may be caused by one or more of the following reasons. The fill valve is leaking. This is often the first thing blamed. A way to see if the fill valve is the problem is to shut off the valve on the inlet and outlet of the fill valve or pressure reducing valve. If the tank continues to flood, it's not the fill valve and you need to look somewhere else. If it doesn't flood, the fill valve may be defective or misadjusted. The gauge glass is leaking. This is more common. You can try tightening the packing nut on the top valve and the top vertical nut on the gauge glass. Be careful tightening the gauge glass nut as the gauge glass could break, spraying you with water. If you're confident the gauge glass is where the air is leaking, I would suggest changing the rubber washers. It will give you a better seal as the old seals dry out and leak air from the heat inside the boiler room. Be careful handling the gauge glass as you don't want to try finding one of these in stock at a wholesaler. The tank is leaking. A pinhole in the top of the tank could allow air to escape slowly. These are very difficult to find as the air leaks slowly out the tank. I look for a small rust mark on top of the tank or above the water line. This could be where the air is escaping. The tank is too small. This will usually present itself from the start. I like asking the customer when the problems first started. If it's a relatively new problem, the tank is probably not undersized, unless conditions have changed. If the old system was sized and operating at 140 degrees Fahrenheit and is now operating at 180 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it could be undersized. The warmer the water, the more it expands. To drain the tank, I close the valve feeding the compression tank from the system air removal fitting, if there is one. I close the makeup water valve to the system. If the tank has an air fill fitting, I open the vent valve and drain until the water stops. The ideal elevation is about two-thirds of the way up the tank. If the tank doesn't have an air control fitting and just a hose bib, I isolate the tank from the system and shut off the makeup water line. After connecting a hose to the tank, I aim it towards the floor drain, but I don't push it in. Most storm drains can't tolerate water higher than 140 degrees Fahrenheit. After opening the drain valve on the tank, the water will start coming out and will stop and suck air back in. Stop when the tank is two-thirds of the way full on the gauge glass. This will show how high the water should be in the tank, according to Bell & Gossett. Things to check on a steel compression tank. The piping from the air removal fitting should be pitched up to the tank to allow air bubbles to rise. The piping should not be restricted between the air removal fitting and the tank. Bell & Gossett recommends either no valve or a full ported gate valve. I'm sure a full ported ball valve will work. If you find this video helpful, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com focuses on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is fireiceheat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. My boiler books are available on Amazon, and my technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by the Boiler Room Detective channel, and I'll see you on the next case.